Hello, my name is Dr. Tom Bryan. Uh, I'm going to examine the nerves of your head and neck today, called the cranial nerves. Okay, doctor. What's your name? Uh, I'm Luke. Luke, nice to meet you, Luke. Hello. So Luke, I'm just going to take a couple of seconds to observe you, if that's all right. First, remember the general observations that apply to any system. Apply these specifically to the neurological exam. Additional observations that are specific to the neurological examination can be summarized with the mnemonic cashier. C is for consciousness level. Is it normal or reduced? Use the Glasgow Coma Scale to report consciousness in a consistent way. A is for asymmetry. Look for symmetry of posture, any spasticity and muscle wasting. A patient can be symmetrically affected, so the presence of symmetry does not outrule any problems. S is for scars. Look particularly for neurosurgical and traumatic scars, but mention any that are visible. H is for hearing aids. I is for involuntary movements. E is for equipment, such as mobility aids, wheelchairs and assistive devices. R is for rash. Comment on any visible rashes. The olfactory nerve is not usually tested formally, except using a screening question. First thing I'd like to ask you is, have you noticed any problems with your sense of smell recently? Formal testing using commonly available odours can be done by a specialist. Okay. All right, so the next thing I'd like to do is uh, check and see uh, what your vision is like. Now this isn't a formal test of vision, it's just to make sure that you can see things out of each eye. So can I get you to cover one eye please? Visual acuity is not formally tested in a cranial nerve exam, so it is not necessary to use a Snellen chart at 6 metres from the patient. You may use a pocket Snellen chart to ensure that the patient can see adequately through each eye. Alternatively, check for ability to see out of each eye by asking the patient how many fingers you are holding up. And if you could read the line just above the green line there. EDFCZP. Okay, perfect. So for this next part, we're going to have to sit a little bit closer. So just we'll put our knees together. Okay. Now, I'm going to get you to cover up your right eye. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move my fingers in from our peripheral, into our peripheral vision. Okay, I want you to tell me when you can see my fingers, they're going to be wiggling, and then tell me when they stop. Okay. Visual fields are tested in each eye separately. The moment when the patient says they see your fingers, should correspond with the same moment that you see your fingers. Repeat the process in all four quadrants of the visual fields of each eye. If the patient's visual field is contracted, they will need more specialist testing with an Amsler grid. You keep your hand there. I'm just going to change hands myself. So just keep looking at my nose. Do I see them? There they are. Okay. Stopped. Stopped. And they're coming from the bottom. There they are. Stopped. Stopped. Okay, great. Now, we'll change eyes. So cover up this eye now, and we'll just go through the same thing again. So we're coming in from the periphery again. There they are. Stopped. There they are. Stopped. Okay, you can keep your hand there. See them. Stopped. Okay. See them. Stopped. Okay, that's great. So you just keep looking at my nose. I'm just going to put both my hands out like this and I'm going to wiggle my fingers uh, and you just tell me, uh, you just point with one of your hands to which side the wiggling fingers are on. Okay? All right, so you just look at my nose. Visual inattention occurs on the side opposite an injured cerebral hemisphere. It is possible to check for the size of the blind spot and for a central scotoma. This is not routinely done in a cranial nerve examination. Okay, great. So I'm just going to uh, get up so I can closer see uh, your eyes for this bit. Uh, I'm just going to shine this light into your eyes. So I'll just get you to look at uh, that point on the wall back there. The oculomotor nerve has a sensory and a motor component. To test the sensory component, start by checking the pupils for light and consensual light reflexes and accommodation. Check for the light reflex by shining the torch into the patient's eye from the side. 
you will see that the pupil constricts when light is shone upon it. Repeat the process and look at the other eye. You will notice that the pupil in that eye also constricts. This is the consensual light reflex. Now, I'm going to stay standing up because I want to look. I want to see your pupil quite closely. What I'm going to get you to do is focus on. You're, you're already. You've got a spot picked out on the wall there. Off we go. Perfect. Okay, Luke. Can I get you to look at the tip of my finger? And now, could you focus on the wall behind? Normal accommodation will mean that the pupils constrict when focusing on your finger. Look at the tip of my finger again. And now, look at the back wall again. Okay, that's great. Thank you. I'm going to do one more thing with the light. Again, I guess you just look at the spot on the wall. Next, check for a relevant afferent pupillary defect, which is a sign of optic nerve damage. Okay, great. Okay, now I'm going to check the muscles around your eyes, make sure they're functioning correctly. I'm going to get you to look at my finger. So. Don't move your head at all. I want you to follow my finger with your eyes. And I want you to tell me if you see double at any point. The motor components of the third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves are tested together. Make sure the patient does not move their head and make sure to instruct them to inform you if at any point they see double. Always remember that the oculomotor nerve innervates all ocular muscles except lateral rectus, which is innervated by the abducens nerve and superior oblique, which is innervated by the trochlear nerve. I'm gonna check the sensation around your face now. Maybe you could sit forward a little bit. I'm gonna do that using a cotton bud. I'm just gonna to touch this off your chest. Can you tell me what that feels like? Uh, it feels soft. It feels soft, okay. Now I'm gonna to touch it around your, your face. What I want you to do is tell me, is say, say yes when you feel it, and uh, also let me know if the left feels different to the right. Okay, I'll get you to close your eyes for this. Test for light sensation of each branch of the trigeminal nerve bilaterally. As you do so, ask the patient if the left and the right feel the same. Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm going to do the same again, but with a slightly sharper end on the cotton bud. I'll just touch it there so that you know what it feels like. How did that feel for you? Uh, pointy. Pointy. Okay. So I'll get you to close your eyes and we'll do the same thing again. Next, test for sharp sensation in the same manner. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. To test the motor component of the trigeminal nerve, start by inspecting the muscle bulk of the temporalis and master muscles. If you could clench and unclench your teeth. Ask the patient to clench their teeth, and as they do so, palpate the masseters and temporalis muscles. You could uh, drop your jaw open a little bit, and uh, don't let me close it. Next, ask the patient to open their mouth and hold it open as you try to close it and then just push it up against my hand, push your jaw against my hand. With their mouth still open, ask them to move their jaw from left to right against resistance supplied by your hand. Um, I'm gonna move on to the facial nerve now. So for the facial nerve, I need to get you to do a few movements with your face. The phrase, 10 zebras buggered my cat, is used to remember the five motor branches of the facial nerve. Temporal, zygomatic, buccal, marginal mandibular, and cervical. So I'll get you to puff out your cheeks. Test each branch separately, comparing left and right. Okay. I'll get you to bare your teeth like that. Okay, don't let me close your mouth. And now I'll get you to uh, tense your neck muscles like this. See what I'm doing there? Okay, and I'll just feel that there. All right. Perfect. Uh, the next thing I'm going to check is your hearing. The vestibular branch of the eighth cranial nerve is not routinely tested. Uh, you don't wear any hearing aids, right? I don't. To test the cochlear branch, start by removing any hearing aid. Inspect the pina and the skin around the ears. All right. Now I'm just going to whisper some numbers into your ear. If you could just tell me what those numbers are. The whisper test is a crude basic test for hearing loss in each ear. 100. Okay. 78. 101. Okay. Waver's test will identify if one ear is perceiving the vibrating tuning fork louder than the other. If one ear does hear the tuning fork louder, then there is either a conduction deficit in that ear or a neurological deficit in the other ear. If the sound does not localize preferentially to one ear over the other, both ears are functioning equally, which means that both are normal 
both have the same conductive defect or the same neurological defect. Rene's test will differentiate between a conduction or a nerve defect. Start by placing a vibrating tuning fork over the mastoid process. Hear that? Yep. Tell the patient to inform you when they can no longer hear the vibration. At this point, move the vibrating ends of the tuning fork closer to the ear and ask if they can hear it again. Okay, we'll do the same on the other side. Can you hear that? Yes. Just let me know when you can't hear it. In normal hearing, or with a neurological deficit, they will once again be able to hear the vibrating tuning fork. There? Yes. Okay. It is important to know how to interpret Weber and Rene's tests together. So the next uh, thing I need to do is look inside your mouth. For that I have a, a sterile tongue depressor here. There are two tests for the glossopharyngeal nerve. The best one for exams is to touch the back of the pharynx with a sterile tongue depressor, as this nerve innervates that area for sensation. The other test is to touch the tongue depressor off the back of the tongue. The sensory component of the gag reflex is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, with the motor component being innervated by the vagus nerve. It is not expected that students do this routinely, but they should be able to describe it. I need you to say ah. Uh. The most important test of vagus nerve function is to ask the patient to open their mouth, stick out their tongue and say ah. As they do this, observe the uvula for deviation. If there is damage to the vagus nerve, the uvula will be pulled towards the normal side. The accessory nerve innervates the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Okay, so I, what I'd like to do now is if you could shrug your shoulders up. Check for strength of trapezius by asking the patient to shrug their shoulders upwards into your hands as you apply downward pressure on the shoulders. Check for strength of the sternocleidomastoid by asking the patient to look over one shoulder while you push their chin back towards the midline with your hand. Perfect. And now if you can stick your tongue straight out. The hypoglossal nerve innervates the muscles of the tongue. Lesions affect the ipsilateral side of the tongue. However, this nerve has bilateral upper motor neuron innervations, and so motor neuron lesions may cause no deviation. So that's everything. That's all 12 Ukrainian nerves examined. So thank you very much. Thank you.